Good afternoon, good morning, good evening from wherever you're watching us from. This is Youth Junction, the place where we stir up each other and help the young people to maneuver and do life during this time of difficultness for their age. Karibu Sana Youth Junction, our topic today is five ways of conceiving your vision. Remember that for the lack of vision, many cast off restraint. May the Lord help you even as you join us today and let's see how you can be able to conceive your vision because any discouraged and disappointed individual looks for one thing, a clear picture of what to run with in their lives. Five ways on how to conceive a vision. If you will remember, we have talked so much about vision and why vision with the young people because God is acquainted to speaking to people at a very young age so that our lives are well defined, our, well, our lives are well directed. Now, God's solution for a distracted, discouraged, uh, disappointed people is actually vision. And the cause of destruction, the cause of disappointment, the cause of discouragement in life, the cause of disappointment in life, is still the same thing, lack of vision. Because where there is no vision, the Bible says that people cast off restraint. You know, people do not live an organized life. And where there is no structure, where there is no organization in life, where there is no clear definition of what a person is doing in life, uh, then you have destruction, you have disappointments, you have discouragement, and Vision is a good solution for all the depression that we are seeing, the hopelessness that we are seeing in the lives of our young people, um, the, the, the violence that we are seeing in the lives of our young people, because any person who do not have a vision, the Bible is very clear, they cast off restraint. They cannot be able to live a directed life. Um, five ways. Five ways. We are talking about the five ways on how to conceive a vision. And one of the ways of how to conceive a vision, number one, is prayer. Number one is prayer. Uh, the Bible says uh, in Jeremiah 33 and verse number three, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Now, apparently, most of us are used to calling upon God on our own personal needs, things that we love to have and uh, the kind of a future we would want to look into or become without understanding the need for us to seek God for our own personal essence of living, the purpose of why God has created us. Of course, there is the ultimate purpose for each one of us, which is ruling and reigning together with our Lord Jesus Christ. But every Everybody in this life has an assignment, has something they must be running after. Uh, it is of paramount importance that even on our own personal lives, live alone being blessed, live alone having money, that we take some time and seek God for our own personal essence of existence. Because there are those things that are unsearchable in God that we do not know about our lives and God is willing to show them to us when we commit ourselves in prayer. We need to take our lives seriously. We need to take our family seriously. We need to take our relationship seriously and seek God on those particular matters that God can lead us and God can be able to direct us. Psalms 139 and verse number 16 makes it very clear to us that all the days ordained for us, ordained for me, and ordained for you were written in his book before one of them came to be. So in other words, everything that God has ordained about my life and about your life is actually written in the word of God. In other words, the word of God, the place of prayer, you know, the place of seeking God is a place where we are able to understand every detail about our own personal lives. Then God continued putting it very clear in scripture in Jeremiah chapter number 29 and verse number 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. 
plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Are you there? You're hopeless. You don't see the end of your future as a young person. I welcome you to the place of prayer. I welcome you to a place of relating with God and inquiring from Him what is the plan that He has for your own personal life. Because remember, He has a future that has hope. He has a future that is prosperous for each one of us. None of us need to struggle with hope in life. None of us need to struggle with prosperity in life. But what is it that is going to make us not struggle with these things? When we choose to seek God in the place of prayer. When we choose to ask the one who has everything about our lives written in his word. And one of the ways of getting to get in touch and connect with God is through his word. Young people, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible is everything in matters to do with connecting with God and understanding our purposes for life. Now, number two, number two uh, of uh, how we can conceive our visions is intimacy with God, is having intimacy with God. Just as conception of a baby takes place when there is a seed that is sown in the womb of the mother, and in a very quiet environment, there is need for us to spend intimate time with God where we allow him to impregnate us with purpose, to impregnate us with our future, with our plan or with his plan in our own lives. Why? Everything that we do in our lives, the decisions that we make in our lives, they determine destinies. And when we allow God in his silence to minister to us and give us the unction and the purpose of why each one of us exists, then we will have a very clear destiny. Look at Habakkuk chapter number two. The Bible says, I will stand my watch and I will set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. Look at the writer of Habakkuk. He's saying, I will stand on the rampart. In other words, I will be still. Yeah. I know we are in a very destructive world where there is a lot of noise all over, but I want us to understand that our God speaks in the silence. He, yes, he can speak in loud environments, but he likes speaking great things of our future in silence. So, young person, you can stand, you can be still, you can deal away with it. you can deal with all the distractions in your life. You can make sure you deal deal with uh, switching off your phone. Why our phones have a switch of buttons is because there are times we need to have it off so that we can get our we can get ourselves away from the distractions of this world and get into a place of silence where we can hear God. And he says, I will watch and see. Now, vision requires watching. Vision requires seeing and not seeing with the physical eyes, but seeing with the spiritual eyes. Stand still, take a break, get to a moment of prayer, Back to a place whereby you're intimate with God. Wait upon him. Look at the psalmist in Psalms 27 and verse number 4. He says, One of the things that I have desired, and this thing will I follow after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And he says that I may gaze at the beauty of his holiness and inquire. A time comes whereby you just guessing, standing still, dealing with all manner of distractions, allowing yourself to get into a silent mode where you can conceive the will of God, the purpose of God for our lives. One must be willing to watch and see and watch and see in silence as you allow God to speak to us. Why? God speaks to us through visions, through dreams, through his own voice. And if we are to hear his voice, then we need to draw nigh to himself. We need to come closer to himself. Why does God uh, speak to us in silence? It's because he wants to speak to us when we have drawn closer to him. And he says, draw closer, draw nigh to me, and I will draw closer to you. 
Number three, how can we be able to conceive our vision? You're there as a young person and you're saying, my life is hopeless. My life has no direction. I have no meaning. I don't know what to do about my life. Number three, focus on the eternal things. Remember, the last time when we talked about vision, we said the greatest vision you can ever conceive in life is your eternal purpose with God because a vision has to do with things that are not seen, things that cannot be able to be touched. Second Corinthians chapter number 4 verse 17 and 18, the Bible says, Well, we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Look on the things that are not seen. Those ones are eternal. Those ones can be supplied by God. Our focus is not on the natural thing. It must be on the spiritual things. It must be on those things that are not seen. Because the things that are seen, they are temporal. Look at Moses. Moses. A young man who walked by faith with God. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 27, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Young people, young people, young people, I'm calling us to forsake the ways of this world. Moses forsake the ways of Egypt. He forsook the systems of Egypt. He forsook the way Egypt did things in their days, the worldly things. Young person, Moses, one of the successful young men that we know in the Bible, the Bible is very clear that he had to forsake Egypt. You need to forsake some of your ways. You need to forsake what you perceive about sex. You need to forsake some of the things that you understand about prospering. Nowadays, young people are looking into the natural things. They want things that can be seen. They want things that can be touched. They don't want to believe in God. They, they want things that can be available like this, you know. Um, but anything that is going to last is invisible. Now, Moses forsook the things of Egypt and not fearing the wrath of the king, he endured seeing him who is invisible. Let me tell you, for you to conceive a vision, you will need to focus on those things that are invisible, allowing God to grow you in faith because the invisible spiritual things gives us the momentum even when the vision is tested. Let me say this, we are living at a very testing time of our lives. The unemployment, the peer pressure, the economical influence that we are experiencing in our land is something that can weigh us down. But let me tell you, not for they that are focusing on eternal things, because in focusing on eternal things, one of the things that God makes clear to us that he will provide to us and only, only by faith. The beauty about uh, intriguing those things that are not seen, God invoke into us the spirit of innovation, the spirit of creativity in us, and we are able to come to become a global solutionists because of looking at the gaps in the society, the gaps in the community, and as we wait upon the Lord, God gives us godly ideas, heavenly ideas to solve men's problems. And any time you come up with an agenda or an idea of solving the problems of humanity, let me tell you, greatness, success, millionaire or billionaire is your next name. The great people in this world are people that have sold, that have been able to solve the issues of humanity. Anytime you rise up and fill a gap and bring in a solution, let me tell you, money is not a problem. Connection is not a problem at all. We need to be able to think on eternal things, to focus on things that are above, to think out of the box because the creator of the universe 
is able to give us uh, something to run with in the course of our lives, even as we solve the equations of human challenges in this world. And let me tell you, resources will not be a problem uh, to us. Number four, how do I conceive the vision? How do I conceive my vision? Through traveling, through traveling in the presence of God. Now, most of our visions for ministry are birthed through pain. The process of pain can lead one to birthing a vision. My husband, Bishop George, is actually leading a ministry we are calling the Pastors Network International. Now, this vision was conceived in pain. This vision was conceived as he went through the process of pain, character being molded, patience being molded. And in that moment of pain, in the deep moments of uh, challenges and pain, he was able to look back by the help of the Holy Spirit and look at all the other pastors and say, hmm, wait a minute. If this is what I am going through at my level as a man of God, how about the other men of God out there? And let me tell you, out of that pain, a ministry, Pastors Network International was born. Ecclesiastic chapter number 5 and 3, the Bible says, For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. And that word business, multitude, is meaning great. And according to the Hebrew definition of that business, it means travail of difficulty. In other words, for a dream cometh through a multitude of difficultiness or difficult, or, or, or difficult moments. Let me tell you, don't waste your difficult moments. Don't wait your pain. Don't waste your challenges. In the challenges, there is a vision right in there. Look at people like uh, Moses, the bathing, the bathing of the vision, the bathing of the vision that God gave them of delivering the children of Israel. It was bathed by being able to see the pain that the children of Israel were going through in the land of bondage. And because of seeing their pain, he desires to deliver them. And in desiring to deliver them, God calls him 40 years in the wilderness to be able to be taught on how to deliver the children of Israel. Vision is birthed through travail. Finally, number five. Finally, number five. Visions are birthed through association. Through association. When you associate yourself with great men, don't surround yourself uh, with, with, with visionless people. Don't surround yourself with people who have no dreams. Young people, I'm calling you to a place of serving. Serve people with great visions. As you see older men, as you see older women, you know, the way they have conceived their visions and serve under those people, let me tell you, you will be able to conceive your own vision. Visionaries are able to see the finished in the future and grow your faith to dreaming bigger things in your life. You know, exposure is very key in life. There are things that you will never conceive in your life until and unless you have exposure. And one of the ways of getting exposure in life is by serving another great person. Why not go to a company and ask whether you can be a volunteer? Why not look for a man of God? Or why not look for somebody who is great in business and ask them, how can I help you? How can I serve as a volunteer? And as you give yourself to serving with them, you will actually learn a lot and innate in seeing, in exposure, in associating with great men and great women, you will be able to bath a vision for your own life. Thank you so much for tarrying with me. I want to ask you again to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Pastor Monica Mlinge. Let's share and share and share so that we can be able to help other young people. Oh my goodness, young people are getting into drugs, young people are getting into illicit liquor, young people are getting into chemical and non-chemical addictions. I'm here to encourage us. One of the antidote of having a focused life is conceiving a vision for your life. 
do not abort your life before time because your days are numbered and they are in the hands of God. And God's desire is that he can be able to give you great plans, great dreams, that he can be able to give you a future and a hope in a hopeless world. May the Lord richly bless you. Allow me to pray with you, young person, even as we trust God that he will get you into that deeper, intimate moment where you can conceive that vision for your life. And remember, in every vision, there is provision. In every vision, it defines your direction. So it is an end to living a hopeless life because when you have it clear and seen in the spiritual realm, you have the help of God to walk through that path. Just like Joseph, in his dream, in his spiritual dream, he sees himself in the plan of God, a vision that falls on the plan of God, delivering his own brethren. And today we read about that young person. And in that vision, there was provision, there was victory. Though there were tests here and there, the young man, finally that vision, he was able to see it to the very end because any written vision, as you run, you will see it. And though it tarries, it will speak and it will come to pass. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you. I pray for the young people tonight. I'm asking you, Jehovah, that you will remember our young people in their hopelessness, oh God. I pray that you will remember them in their addictions, my Father. Lord, I pray that you will bring them to a place of seeking you, waiting upon you, a place of intimacy, Lord, a place, Jehovah, raw expectancy that you would minister to them that which you have for their future. Lord, I pray that they will seek you in prayer. I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will draw many to you in the name of Jesus. Our Father, we thank you. I bless them, Lord. I pray for any young person that is fantasizing suicide, oh God. Young men in addiction, God, I pray that you will send help to them in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. And we say amen and amen. May the Lord richly bless you. It was nice having this time together with you. And bye-bye until next Saturday. God bless you.